Corporate Clash is my favorite Toontown server in the world. It has allowed me to meet so many incredible people and build a community that I'll cherish forever. Today I'd like to reflect on the evolution of Corporate Clash and tell the story of my personal journey with the server and why it means so much to me. My name is Tucker, and this is a tribute to Toontown Corporate Clash. Toontown is a game that I've never really been able to escape from. I played it constantly as a child, and I even have memories of staying up until sunrise working on my Toon tasks and progressing my Cellbot suit. As much as us Toontown fans love to complain about how tedious our game is, there's something about the gameplay loop that's captivating, and the game will always have a special place in my heart. But it was never the gameplay itself that kept pulling me back into Toontown. Instead, it was always the people I met along the way, the connections I cherished and cultivated over my many hours spent exploring factories and mints galore. I would always be so eager to come home from school and hop on Toontown in order to catch up with whoever was online. I truly felt like I was bonding with these people, despite being limited to chatting through SpeedChat Plus. Because at the end of the day, my friends meant everything to me. And that's something about me that's never changed even after all of these years. After Toontown Online closed and private servers had finally opened to the public, I once again found myself revisiting Toontown every few years. I would meet new friends, surpass new milestones that I had never achieved on Toontown Online, and bask in the nostalgia that Toontown never fails to provide. This pattern of being obsessed with Toontown for a few months each year would continue for nearly half a decade. It was through Toontown Rewritten where I made my first online friend group that transcended the boundaries of SpeedChat Plus. In 2017, we made a Skype group chat and countless memories were made playing Toontown together and laughing in a voice call over the natural oddities that occur when playing through this antiquated MMO. But as the days went on and as the weather got warmer, I found myself logging on less and less. I could still keep in touch with my friend group while off the game, but even that began to slow down. Life got busy for most of us, and as I completed high school, any thought of playing Toontown naturally faded away. I practically forgot about the game for many years. I was making friends in other communities, and my focus shifted to making YouTube content. I had finally moved on. Under different circumstances, my Toontown journey could have ended there. Now to growing concerns about the deadly coronavirus. Over 100 cases in more than a dozen have. states. Italy and is on total dead. lockdown. Breaking developments in the coronavirus emergency. In the blink of an eye, the world shut down. Everything was put on pause as everyone was gifted with an overbearing amount of free time. It was a time of uncertainty, and I think we all were in need of an escape. And after years of not paying even a single thought to the state of Toontown, one day my boredom got the best of me, and I dusted off my Toontown Rewritten account to revisit the online world of my childhood. For whatever reason, I wanted to make some kind of change to commemorate a new beginning, so I bought a Toon Rewrite, and I changed my Toon's color from aqua blue into a bright green. I instantly started making new friends, and even reconnected with some old ones. My Toontown drive was back. I hit the ground running with the grind and would spend all day building up my cog suits and increasing my max laugh. But playing Toontown wasn't enough to satiate my boredom during the 2020 lockdown. Reuniting with the game had reminded me of something that I'd always wanted to do, to fight the VP all by myself and upload my very own Toontown VP solo video on YouTube. I felt that an unedited Toontown video would feel out of place on my YouTube channel, so I created a new channel and named it after my tune featured in the solo, Stuck the Duck. And to my surprise, people started to care about my solo. I started receiving comments and views, and the video performed better than anything on my first YouTube channel. This motivated me to start posting more Toontown content, and before I knew it, I started making waves in the community with some of my videos. Being a Toontown content creator got me so much more invested in the community than ever before. I started watching a variety of YouTube creators in the community, and Toontown content became my new bread and butter. If I wasn't playing Toontown, I was watching Toontown. Solos, playthroughs, comedy videos, I enjoyed them all. And as I made my way through the vast library of Toontown content, one day I stumbled upon something that caught my attention. During my longest absence from the Toontown community, a new Toontown private server had made its debut. When I first heard about Toontown Corporate Clash, I didn't immediately download the game. I was hesitant to explore a new version of Toontown that was foreign to me. Besides, I had my tight-knit friend group on Toontown Rewritten, and that was good enough for me. 
Alas, with no sign of the world returning to normal anytime soon, I decided to give Corporate Clash a try. In May of 2020, I recorded a YouTube video of my first time playing Corporate Clash. And to my surprise, I had an absolute blast recording this video. The game felt fresh. It was a new take on the Toontown formula that stood out from the other servers. The Break the Law event allowed me to train my gags quickly, and I found the slightly higher difficulty of the gameplay very appealing. I enjoyed my time exploring the world of Corporate Clash and discovering all that it had to offer. Yet, it still wasn't enough. I felt like something was missing when I played Corporate Clash, and truth be told, it was my friends. My friends were all working on their tunes on Toontown Rewritten, who found Corporate Clash to be too alienating or unoptimized for their computers. The Corporate Clash population at this time was only in the double digits, so I struggled to find new friends to play the game with. The loneliness got to me, and I slowly drifted back into the comfort of my high laugh tune on Toontown Rewritten. At that point, Corporate Clash would need to do something huge to truly hook me for good. Only something truly spectacular and unheard of. And boy did they deliver. A secret level 50 boss cog with over 4,000 health, the witness stand-in boss battle. And to make matters more dire, this boss was only available for a limited time. Nothing has ever motivated me to grind through Toontown more than this. As both a lover of Toontown, as well as a content creator, I could not miss this opportunity to take on this limited time challenge. With only 79 laugh, a level 1 disguise, and unmaxed gags, I somehow convinced three high laugh tunes to let me tag along on an attempt to take down the witness stand-in. We were able to meet the requirements to unlock the battle, and I had more fun fighting this boss than I'd ever experienced in Toontown. And as a bonus, it made for an absolutely edge-of-your-seat reaction YouTube video. Corporate Clash had done it. They had blown my mind. Things were different now. The possibilities had opened, and normal Toontown gameplay wasn't the same anymore. Doing endless facilities and department bosses felt stale and draining compared to the adrenaline I felt taking on a level 50 Skellig Hog. But the Corporate Clash crew had bigger plans. The witness stand-in was them only getting started. Nothing could have prepared me for the release of Corporate Clash's 1.1 update. I remember watching the last stand animation completely in awe, giddy at the fact that my niche interest had been captured in a high quality 2D animation. The update introduced a brand new department boss battle completely built from the ground up, a feat that no other private server had ever pulled off. They replaced the most underwhelming boss from Toontown Online with something much more engaging and involved, setting a completely new standard for what modern Toontown looks like. But that wasn't all. Alongside the CLO battle and a variety of quality of life enhancements, Corporate Clash created high definition, animated cog heads for the Lawbot department. In comparison to everything they've done, this might seem like a more moderate change, but this was very special for me. As a child, I would genuinely spend hours daydreaming about what Toontown would look like if it was released with modern assets. And specifically, I pictured how fantastic cogs would look, how much more detailed and expressive they could be if created with better technology. Corporate Clash quite literally made my Toontown dreams come true. From here I was sold. After I eventually achieved 137 laugh on Toontown Rewritten, Corporate Clash became my primary focus. I built up my cog suits and maxed my gags. I got to battle the Directors, Counterclaim, and Sads, which were all a blast to experience. I started making new friends on Corporate Clash, and some of my friends from Toontown Rewritten started making tunes of their own. Around this time I started streaming on Twitch, and started a new playthrough of Corporate Clash where if my tune went sad, I would have to delete him forever. Building my streaming community while playing through the Corporate Clash task line created memories that I'll cherish forever. Playing with viewers added an entire new layer to playing Toontown, and it was heartwarming to see how many people were invested in my tune survival. As my community continued to grow, I finally felt that I had achieved something truly special in my content creation journey. As 2020 came to an end, Corporate Clash was thriving, as the player base had been significantly boosted thanks to the 1.1 update. But despite this, Corporate Clash was still overshadowed by the more popular Toontown Rewritten. Despite providing a greater amount of unique content, many Toontown fans still weren't quite sold or ready to make the leap. But there were talks about something on the horizon. Corporate Clash still had yet to play their ace in the hole. The night that would change the course of Toontown's future forever. The 1.2 update broke me. I can't put into words how unprepared and pleasantly flabbergasted I felt when first taking on the Overclock CLO and her trusty litigation team. 
The Corporate Clash crew had taken my favorite Toontown experience at that point, the Witness Stand-In, and completely surpassed it by creating four unique boss cogs with intricate and charming designs. And not only that, they followed up this challenge with Toontown's first ever bullet hell. The difficulty of the overclock CLO is something I was not prepared for, and I'm putting it lightly when I say that this update blew my socks off. Alongside a rebalancing of boss rewards to make the game more challenging, and creating an entire new battle GUI, the Corporate Clash crew had done it again. They had once again successfully hooked me back in and reminded me why I love playing their game so much. I remember the absolute thrill I felt when I was finally able to complete the overclock CLO, which took me five attempts to achieve. To this day, the 1.2 update is the Toontown update that I look back on the most fondly. It's the update that solidified my strongest friend group I've ever had in my life, by creating endless opportunities to make memories playing Toontown with some of my favorite people. While the 1.1 update was impressive in its own right, the 1.2 update truly demonstrated the Corporate Clash crew's capabilities and in what direction they wanted to take Toontown in. It was at this point when, despite having a smaller player base, Corporate Clash had earned a spot in the big leagues. No longer did people consider Toontown written the main server in a sea of smaller servers. There were instead now two giants, coexisting and spearheading the community to greater sites. This is personal conjecture, but it is my belief that Corporate Clash's 1.2 update had a significant positive impact on the quality of Toontown Rewritten's Field Office update by introducing concepts that add a much needed and very satisfying difficulty curve to Toontown. And I think that's something we tend to forget, is that Corporate Clash's updates are not only fun to play, but they actively increase the quality standard of everything in the Toontown community. They certainly inspire me to create quality entertainment, and I can't imagine how many rookie game developers look to the Corporate Clash crew for inspiration. I will never forget the impact of the 1.2 update, nor will I forget all of the fond memories I share with my friends during one of the peaks of Corporate Clash's history. In the summer of 2021, I had completed practically everything Corporate Clash had to offer. My zero-death playthrough had been completed, and Stuck the Duck had reached max laugh points. And it was at this point where the fatigue started to settle in. Streaming Corporate Clash slowly started to lose its luster, as I reached a point where I had little reason to keep playing the game. As far as Toontown had evolved, it was still a game designed from the ground up to be monotonous and repetitive. It was at this point that I realized that what I was experiencing was a familiar feeling. It was the feeling of my Toontown interest fading away, just as it always had in many years prior. But unlike in the past, feeling myself drift away from Toontown left me feeling melancholy. I really didn't want to stop caring about the game. I kept making Toontown content to the best of my ability, but it didn't feel nearly as magical as it once did. Eventually, Halloween came along, and with it, the 1.2.5 update. This definitely perked up the end of the year for me, giving me a spark of motivation to play Corporate Clash again. This smaller scale update added a new spin on the seasonal counterclaim boss and revamped many of Toontown's activities such as racing and trolley games. They even introduced a new table game called Tuno, a detail that'll be important much later down the line. It was good to see that the Corporate Clash crew were still hard at work, but I couldn't quite shake the feeling that the game peaked with the 1.2 update. The Halloween content kept me engaged for a small period of time before I found myself in the melancholy disinterested phase once again. I needed something bigger to pull me back in. And bigger is what we got with the introduction of Counterfeit, a comically buff relative to Counterclaim that was limited to Corporate Clash's April Fool's event in 2022. This update was definitely a highlight, as I can't deny how thrilling it was to fight Counterfeit for the first time. But unfortunately, I didn't feel very much incentive to continue fighting him more than a few times before he was removed from the game. Furthermore, the other major April Fool's edition, Overclocked Find the Foreman, was interesting at first, but overall was not something I enjoyed very much. After April Fool's had ended, Corporate Clash wouldn't receive another major update until much later. But meanwhile, the early phases of something magical had begun. That's right, it was around this time where production started on my magnum opus, We Just Wanna Play Tuna. I could make an entire separate documentary on the production of this animated music video, but the important takeaway is that it was this project that kept me immersed in the community during the drought between Corporate Clash updates. I nearly spent all year working with the incredibly talented team who made this video a reality, and I even got the help of the Corporate Clash crew themselves to help promote the animation. The difficulty of this production process cannot be overstated, especially because 2022 was one of the hardest and worst years of my entire life. Alongside directing the animation, I was still streaming, attending university, and dealing with personal life struggles that left me more stressed than I'd ever felt in my entire life. On top of that, the pressure to make quality Toontown content was starting to build more and more, and I constantly felt the need to outdo myself as my channel got bigger. In November of 2022, with We Just Wanna Play Tuno wrapping production and Corporate Clash's next major update just on the horizon, I was hit with a major health concern. I don't want to share too much, but I was in and out of the emergency room, and I was experiencing insurmountable levels of pain that made every waking moment a living nightmare. The timing couldn't have been worse. I was so eager to make sure the release of my music video was smooth, 
and I was hoping to stream alongside the release of Corporate Clash's next update. The thought of missing such big milestones stressed me out even more. And let me be the first to tell you that stress, if not dealt with properly, can get bad. More than you could ever imagine. I have advice for everyone watching this video. Eliminate as much stress in your life as possible. Don't bite off more than you can chew. And don't force yourself to suffer just to make someone else happy. After a long week of many visits to the hospital, I slowly but surely started to heal from my health scare and was able to muster enough strength to go live for the premiere of Corporate Clash's latest trailer. Little did I know that what I was about to see was something beyond my wildest dreams. The Hires and Heroes update completely changed the culture of the Toontown community. The 16 new managers all brought with them a variety of different personalities and designs, not to mention the amount of game content that came along with them. The Corporate Clash crew looked at the people who thought the 1.2 update was the game's peak and smiled as they practically tripled the amount of content in the game and gave Toontown an entire new level of replayability. As of this recording, it's been nearly a year since the 1.3 update released and I still haven't gotten over how spectacular it was. I remember being overjoyed when that giddy feeling I experienced when facing the litigation team for the first time had finally resurfaced when fighting some of these new managers. I had fallen in Corporate Clash once again after nearly two years of that magical feeling being absent from my life. The new gameplay ranged from simple fun, to brutal challenge, to the best Toontown experience that anyone has ever created. There is no better way to describe the 1.3 update other than a massive success, and it's easily the best update they've ever released to this date. With all of the new content, Toontown creators such as myself had plenty of gameplay to make videos on. And not even a week after this update released to the public, We Just Wanna Play Tuno made its debut on this very YouTube channel. Let's just say Toontown fans were eating well in November of 2022. Because of the enormous magnitude of the 1.3 update, I was able to play Corporate Clash without burning out after just a few weeks. The new managers all came with unique rare cosmetics, and to collect them all, you'd have to battle each of them many, many times. Not only did some of these guys become fan favorites, they also gave Toontown fans hours upon hours of unique gameplay. And speaking of fan favorites, let us not forget about the 2023 April Fools event, which introduced one of the most spectacular and hilarious COG fights that nobody ever saw coming. Everyone, please give a round of applause for the esteemed High Roller. This fight was unbelievable on so many levels. The stunning visuals, a completely unique battle mechanic, and a supremely superb soundtrack that not a single soul could resist dancing to. But what made the High Roller battle truly special is that any player could fight him and still be strong enough to survive. And that was the final piece of the puzzle. Corporate Clash now had something for everybody. After the major critique of the overclock CLO being too inaccessible, Corporate Clash bestowed upon us the most accessible boss fight in Toontown history, while still maintaining an immense level of quality and strategic curve for experienced players to enjoy. And if that's not enough, in the very same update, Corporate Clash overhauled the previous year's Find the Foreman challenge into Face the Family, a highly strategic collection of fights with millions of possibilities and endless replayability. And with that, we've just about caught up on Corporate Clash's history, and how it slowly climbed its way not only to the top, but also to the center of my heart. As of this recording, the smaller scale 1.4 update is recently released, and teasers of the seemingly massive 2.0 update are slowly trickling into the community. In present time, with the hype from the Hires and Heroes and April Fools updates finally having died down, I've once again returned to that familiar feeling of my interest in Toontown fading away. I only log onto the game maybe once or twice a week, and my play sessions never breach the one hour mark. But this time, even though I can feel myself fading away, it isn't the exact same feeling as it used to be. It's only now that I can finally recognize that this feeling of disinterest is not one to be afraid of, nor does it mean I no longer care about the future of Corporate Clash. It's taken until now, after experiencing this feeling well over a dozen times, to realize that this is the Toontown cycle, and that it's only a matter of time until I get to experience the excitement of a brand new Corporate Clash update, which will give me a feeling that's not far from the excitement I felt as a kid when playing Toontown Online. Thanks to the efforts of everyone working on Toontown Corporate Clash, my love for Toontown will never die. To the Corporate Clash crew, to all of you who are working hard at creating experiences that will serve as the foundation for many new memories in the future, I hope that this video demonstrates how the community feels about what you've given us. To the artists who create beautiful visuals that give the game its identity. To the composers who've created melodic masterpieces that I'll hum until the day I die. To the writers who've created an extensive list of relatable and lovable characters. 
to the support and moderation team who facilitate the grueling nature of keeping us Toontown fans safe and happy, to the community team who build our excitement for the future and bring new players into Toontown, to the developers who use their expertise to allow Toontown gameplay to evolve, to the game designers who carefully craft the experiences that shape how we play, to the QA testers who ensure that what we receive is more than what we deserve, and to you, the viewer, and the player of Toontown Corporate Clash, thank you for everything.